Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Rocky Top Roundtable. Alongside Eric Kane, Rob Lewis, and Brent Hubbs, I'm Austin Price on this Georgia Week. Uh, a big matchup as, uh, you know, Tennessee tries to get back up on the horse after getting throttled at Missouri. And, uh, you know, they're going to give Georgia their best shot. Now, will it be enough to, to hang with the top-ranked Bulldogs? We'll see. Well, this, I mean, this Georgia team is playing their best football right now. I think they're the best team in the country. I don't think they're as dominant of a team as they've been the last couple of years. But, Rob, I mean, Tennessee's got to play extremely well to make this a four-quarter fight. Yeah, I mean, they, they, if you look at it, they don't have, you know, first-rounders stacked up in the front seven like, like they might have had. But I, I thought, you know, Jerry Mack said it the best on Tuesday. That they're just so deep. They just keep rolling guys in, and you don't see a drop-off. And, you know, I'm not trying to make them, you know, some mythical, you know, football team. But with what we saw from both sides on Saturday, it would take a dramatic turnaround from Tennessee to make this a four-quarter football game. Yeah, no Jalen Carter, no Christopher Smith, no Keely Ringo, no Nolan Smith. I mean, those were all big-time draft picks last year. Still, this defense in Georgia overall, it's a really good football team. I just think it's recruiting, development, recruiting, development, and that's kind of where you are. Tennessee just has to get back to being Tennessee. Tennessee was not Tennessee on the road to Missouri. Got to run the football, got to stop the run, and then build from there. Everybody says feels like 98. What about feels like 04? In 2004, Georgia throttled LSU. Tennessee got throttled by Auburn. The next week, nobody gave Tennessee much of a chance. They went down to Athens and beat Georgia 19-14. Now, again, that's a lifetime ago and two totally different teams, but I'm just saying it's sports. Stuff happens. Sure. Uh, look at the running game. Tennessee not able to run it effectively, Rob, last week. Went in averaging you know nearly 250 yards a game on the ground. Had about 80, and a lot of that was fourth quarter and junk time. They've not had a lot of success the last couple of years running it against Georgia. Do we believe they can this year? Well, you know, after, if you just look at Missouri, you, you say no, and Georgia does have the top run defense in the SEC in, in conference play. But you look at the last two weeks against Georgia, Missouri had 150 yards, Ole Miss had 180 yards. I mean, they didn't just gash them, but they were able to move the ball, and, and Ole Miss really found some stuff there early before they got behind and, and you know, it became you know, futile to, to run the ball. But, you know, Georgia's not as dominant as they have been. It, the way Tennessee ran the ball against Kentucky, the way they ran the ball against Texas A&M. If they can get back to that, but they've got to be balanced. I mean, Georgia's I'm, I'm susceptible may be a strong word, but I mean, there, there's some stuff there. Missouri and Ole Miss both had some success. I, I think in order to run the football, obviously you got to go out there and, and, and block and, and you know, get back to where you were the last couple of weeks. But I think a lot of this is pre-snap as well. The key's got to be correct. ID's got to be correct. A lot of pre-snap stuff to get yourself in the right position. I'm not sure a lot of that was where it should have been last week at Mizzou. Yeah, I think that's the more, the more and more you get away from the Missouri game, the, the more and more you get the feeling that a lot of Tennessee's issues were mental focus pre-snap, just making a lot of mistakes on both sides of the ball. Uh, Tennessee's going to have to mentally be really sharp. You know what kind of physical game this is going to be. But to do this, you, to win, to have a chance to be in the fourth quarter, you, you can't give away yards. And what I mean by that, you're never going to play perfect. But you can't miss a line defensively and go the wrong way and have your eyes in the wrong spot a bunch. You can't miss open field tackles. And then conversely on offense, you got to know what you're running into, right? I mean, you, it was odd Tennessee ran into a stone wall as often as they did early in the game against Missouri. Like, did Missouri know the plays? Did Tennessee make bad reads? Because that's just not what we've seen out of Tennessee, even in the Florida game. You know, there was some plays here and there. This was, I mean, there was times they had it. I mean, it felt like Missouri was getting ready to take the hand off. You know, there's got to be better reads and communication there. And then Tennessee's got to eliminate pre-snap penalties. They've got to eliminate turnovers, um, things that really, you know, were, you, one, you can't do them against a, 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 an average team. You sure can't do it against the top team in the country. No, I mean, you can't just, you can't shoot yourself in the foot. And uh, that's been a problem for Tennessee all year long with the penalties. The turnovers were new. Uh, on Saturday, but Rob, I mean, if you give you give Georgia extra possessions, you're, you're going to pay dearly for them, and that's what Tennessee ended up doing with Missouri. And at the worst possible times, too. I mean, the turnovers are, are hideous at any point in time. But the, the one going in in the first right half, here. this was debilitating. Just yeah. un unbelievable. And and then you think, okay, well, that cost them three points. I mean, to have what happened next <laughs> was just you know beyond the pale to to give up that 35 yard run and have Missouri steal three points, but. To, to Hubbard's point, I mean, if you have three turnovers against Georgia, it's lights out. I mean, it's it's over. And, and that's on top of the nine penalties for 95 yards. I mean, how many times in the first half did it, did we see second four turn into, you know, second 14 or, you know, third and five turn into third and 15? And, 
and just behind the sticks. And this, this, you know, Hubbard, you said it a million times. The penalties were there last year, just wasn't that big of a problem because they could go make a make a chunk play. This offense ain't doing that. And you know, second fifteen is bad news for this bunch. Yeah, I was going to say you got to win first down, both offensively and defensively. Tennessee didn't win first down. Tennessee didn't win many downs in that football game. But if you don't win first down and you only get a yard or two, sets you up in second and long, second behind the six, whatever the case is, as well defensively. I mean, first down, Missouri was all over the place, you know, running the football, got to account for the running back out of the backfield. Just a lot of things that you did you know, relatively well throughout the season. You just, it's like you didn't get off the bus last week. And again, trying to turn the page of Georgia. Georgia will make you pay in a hurry. And Tennessee plays good at home, but that doesn't matter. Georgia's a good football team, so you got to get back to being you. And well, when you get third and eight, third and nine, third and twelve defensively, you got to you got to stop. You got to get a stop. You the field. I mean, you, you just you're going to be fighting enough third and twos and third and fours all game long. When you finally get somebody in third long, you got to get off the field. And Tennessee was terrible at that a week ago. They were defensively, you know, it, they. They just didn't tackle well. Um, I don't know if, it, you know, BJ talked about the communication when he met with the media on Tuesday. Um, you know, I don't know if you get that cleaned up. Uh, Omar Norman Lott plays a, a really good game, but he, he kind of teeters that line of kind of being almost like Spragans or, you know, like, you know, just very rides that line of being too over the top, right? I mean, he's almost good for a 15 yard penalty a game. Yeah, I mean, again, you got to just got to play a cleaner version of football. I mean, I know that sounds like coach speak, but I mean, you, you can't. I mean, think of the, think of the, the the holding penalties and how critical they were for Tennessee. And then you think about the extracurricular penalties, you know, late hit out of bounds and late hit after the play. I mean, you just in this league with where this team is, the margins um, are, are smaller this year with this team. You, you just can't make the mistakes that Tennessee has routinely made and. Uh, throw in the turnovers last week, and, and it just compounded itself into a disaster. You know, we talk about the fundamentals all the time, and there's a reason why defensively you go out there and you do turnover circuits, you do tackling circuits, you do, you know, uh, stance and steps. It's the fundamentals that can get you beat. Tennessee did not play fundamental football at Missouri. Defensively, the angles horrendous in the second, third layers. Defensive line was playing sideways. I recognize that, not holding your gaps, but – the um, you know the pass of the ball from the linebackers, the star players, the safeties. You've got to play inside out. If you don't play inside out, you're going to create cutback lanes, and you saw that. So, again, not a lot of fundamentals, fundamentally sound football a week ago. You have got to play better fundamentals in this football game because Georgia again is going to try a lot of those same things that Missouri did. If Tennessee is going to be in this thing in the fourth quarter, what's the key matchup? Well, somehow, some way, Tennessee's got to to get. Georgia out of some offensive rhythm and, and look nobody's getting to Carson back I think Lane Kiffin said this week they never put their hand on him uh, but somehow some way Tennessee's got to get Georgia out of an offensive rhythm I, I think that's where it starts for me in this game there's a lot of it but for Tennessee to be in it Rob I, I think the defense has got to really rise to the occasion because I don't think Tennessee's going to out uh, outscore anybody in a shootout uh, here. I, I don't disagree with that, but if Tennessee is going to score at all, they're going to have to get back to running the football. And that's, it's because I don't think they can put – they can't put it all in the quarterback against this defense and expect to have a lot of success. Tennessee's got to get back to averaging over four yards of carry. They've got to get in you know, third manageable situations that they have any hope of keeping drives alive. So I'll go bounce back for the run game after – their, their worst effort of the season against Missouri. Again, both of those are good. I was going to say the run game as well because you're, you're not yourself if you're not running the football, if you're not winning first down, if you're not getting that tempo. And Tennessee wasn't there last week. So, uh, yeah, it might not be enough in this football game. It might be, but you've got to give yourself a chance. And you're not going to give yourself a chance to do anything in this game if you can't run the football and build off that offensively. I'm going to go kitchen sink. I think Tennessee's got to throw the kitchen sink <laughs> at them, do some different stuff oh, I'm defensively. They got to bring the house a few times, and if you and if you get beat over the top, you just got to be okay with it, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, you you've got to throw things that, that you don't normally throw at them. You can't sit back there and play that zone and bend you and mix don't it break. Up. You got to mix it up, do some different things, and mix Georgia's it up. too good yeah. in the red zone to bend, don't break. Because like, if you let them get to the twenty, they they still have so many weapons. Delps, uh, if, even if they're not throwing to Bowers, Delps more than capable. They got those receivers. All of a sudden, you know, you've got a running game that's starting to find its footing with Kendall Milton. So like. Defensively, I think you got to throw a lot of it, and then offensively, throw out a trick player too. I mean, like, what, what's it hurt? Well, I think you got to steal a possession or two somewhere yeah. along the way. Um, you know, and Ole Miss tried to do that with a really nice fake punt. They didn't capitalize on it, but they recognized, hey, we've got to steal a play. We got to steal a possession, and I think Tennessee's got to be aggressive in that way. 
It's Tennessee, it's Georgia, it's the final time Tennessee will be on CBS for the CBS contract as it ends in a couple of weeks. That game 3.30 coming up on Saturday. For the guys, I'm Austin Price for the Rocky Top Roundtable.